All right, welcome back. We are on episode eight. God damn. Eight? Eight episodes already. Uh, crazy, crazy. Look. Crazy, crazy. But dude, we... Dude, I just love this game. I love Star Is it Citizen. crazy that we're at eight episodes, or is it crazy that people are watching enough <laughs> for us to create eight episodes, right? I, like, I what? think both. It just goes <laughs> so fast, because life, you know, grabs you by yeah. the throat sometimes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, it's going good. It's going great. Uh, I'm Daft Hobbit. Thanks for joining us here in Stuck in the Nail. With me, as always, I have here Echo 5 Romeo. How you doing today? I'm good, man. How are you? Dude, good. Just waking up. We're, I didn't have time to get coffee, so this I just grabbed this can of sugar, and that's how yeah, I'm Yeah, I think I already up. got my pot of coffee in today, so if I'm a little wiry, it's probably because I just got done drinking a pot of coffee. Dude, that's what I was thinking. I was looking at this Zoom call, and I'm like, that goes on meth today. Dude, like, <laughs> uh, you know. You're scratching your neck yet? <laughs> one of those days. It is, you know. Burning, burning the candle at both ends and running that midnight oil low, you mm-hmm. know, fucking. And the privateers, man, like we're gaming with them into the wee hours of the morn every morn. night. Yep. Yeah, we 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 get some shit done in the verse. We that was that we we've, we've done some cool stuff this week. So, and we're hoping to talk about we it have. tonight yep. or today. What day? Morning to this episode. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> Where um, are we? Who? Mom? Am I here? mom um so we were gonna we're, what's been on our minds lately we, we, we've been thinking about it we're like what do we want to talk today we're going to talk about insertion methods in the star citizen universe inserting troops um and yeah we're going to be delving into some vehicles and some ships as pertaining to ground as what this podcast is focused for so um on the focus lens yeah of infantry Oh, speaking of that hand gesture, we need some fucking binoculars. Yeah, can we get some binoculars? Can we get some more tools? Again, Jared, if you're watching, do this on stream so I know that you heard me. Yeah, do this. Then we know. We just binos, please. uh, uh, Compasses, binos, binoculars, sleeping bags, and 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 get you know, log out points. Oof, ways to eat our food. Food straws. Food straws. Yeah, injection pills, injection nutrients, we don't know. Okay, Nut- Nutrient injections. That's it. That's all we're going to say on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, insertion methods. If you were to pick, you're, you, you know, you're, you're planning an operation. Um, what's your preferred method of insertion? And that's a very broad question, I know. That's a hugely broad question, right? Yeah. Um, typically... <laughs> within the scope of star citizen and through the focal lens of an infantry man, I like to be dropped off by aerial vehicle. Ah, yes. So you don't, the minimum amount of walking is usually the preferred method for an infantry man. Preferred. Yep. <laughs> so I can speak from um, experience on that. It's fantastic. Having jumped out of planes in real life, um, <clears throat> it is a fantastic option for quickly and expeditiously getting troops to an area um, fast. (laughs) Quickly getting there fast. Yeah. Yep. Got it. So that's some grunt speak right there for you guys. Yep. I have a grunt, baby. I would agree Uh, with you. Yeah. No, seriously, though, Mm -hmm. aerial aerial insertion platforms are probably one of my favorite um, in real life, as in – uh, video games and sci-fi as well i always enjoyed even as a kid before my military experience you know like watching or playing halo right like like watching master chief come off the fucking pelican you know uh yeah what's uh what is it war it's, what what is it the, the tomorrow war with the with tom cruise edge tom of tomorrow cruise. Edge of tomorrow, thank you. Yeah. Edge of tomorrow, those guys just fucking hooking up a a, a string and just get, get the fuck out, you know. Um, yeah, just booted out, zip lining down, repelling essentially on a on a yeah. Wire. ODSTs coming mm-hmm. out of drop pods, right? Like the whole yeah. reason this podcast is named "Stuck in the Nail" is because we read that lore piece about UEE Marines being shot out of fucking drop pods, and to me. That has just always been the coolest way to ever insert. And unfortunately, I was born at the wrong time because 
in 4,000 years from now, if we're still in a race, like that's going to be a thing and I'm going to miss out on that. So I know, I'm right? A little bummed. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Well, Elon Musk, he'll get us there. He's going <laughs> to, we, we might have drop pods next 10 years, you know, if, if, Hopefully. if, if, Sign if me he up. keeps, if he takes over Mars and everything. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that's a good point, man. We, we've been watching this type of rapid insertion methods in almost every science fiction genre you can, you know, put out there. Like, right. Like, uh, just the Halo ODST was something that captivated me. I don't know. I don't know if you remember seeing that live action uh, trailer of the ODST dude dropping down. Yes. And they're doing like a 21 like, gun salute as he like transforms into a hell jumper. Um, so good. Yeah. So. That stuff is, that's why I, pl- I love science fiction. I just love the methods that the militaries use. I, I read science fiction almost on a daily basis. Um, it, when I can, you know, it's, it's, I always have a science fiction book queued up. So if we want to talk right. science fiction books, maybe we'll save that for another episode. But it, when it comes to inserting and insertioning, we, we've, we've bitched about this before on the podcast. So if you're listening and... <laughs> You know, you've heard this before. Sorry, just here's another spoonful, just another dollop of bitching for you. Um, It just, it's missing in Star Citizen. Absolutely missing is a rapid insertion platform. Um, So you prefer ships, right? We we Mm -hmm. talked about patrolling an episode ago. I personally, depending on the mission, right, I have my preferred methods. If we we have time and I want to get there undetected, I think the best option is getting patrol patrolling in there. Um, yeah. And that's where I see usefulness in a ship like the Prowler or or any really traditional dropship. The Prowler can supposedly go stealth, so that's why that makes sense. Um I just I just don't like the Prowler, <laughs> you know. The S word being the connected S-word. to a game mechanic is is like nails on a chalkboard for me. When we talk about the Prowler as a dropship, it is one of the most frustrating conversations I have because people go, well, it's got high stealth. S word. What the fuck does that mean? I mean, has anybody that said that out loud really sat down and thought about the word stealth and what that means, right? Is Mm. it a button you press that makes you go invisible? Is it a button you press that makes you go invisible on a radar? Is it a button you press? Like, again, you see, like, people are expecting these mechanics to be put into the game for stealth. And we'll come back around to that when we get to the probably what is one of my favorite insertion platforms at the moment. Um, Uh, But it is also stealth, but not in the way you might actually think that it is. Yeah. There's multiple ways to define stealth. Stealth is not disappearing. Mm -hmm. Well, it is. It's, It's one part out of, like... A hundred parts. Okay. If stealth had a value of a hundred, like disappearing on radar would be like five. <laughs> it's blending in it, into your environment. It's just That's blending what stealth in. is. Yeah. I mean, if I pull up <laughs> to go smoke some cartel guys and I pull up in an ice cream van and they don't know I'm there, that's stealth. <clears throat> yeah. They or can fully see alternatively, me. if you go to smoke some bad guys and you're, you're dressed like a fucking Ned Flanders from the Simpsons. Uh, you're not, you're not stealth. That's not stealth. You're going to stand out. Yeah. Right. You didn't have to press a button, you know, to exactly. go invisible. Mm-hmm. And in the future of star citizen, there might be some tools to aid in stealth where you could maybe put on a special suit of armor that would camouflage you like that chameleon armor. That's been so, uh, it's been shown in so many movies and videos as well. Um, So that's one method of stealth. Stealth is not, we're so used to it in games. We're just uh, being a gamer. It's like stealth is just one aspect. Like it just Mm -hmm. means being like invisible, harder to detect. But it's just, it's just so one-sided. Like there's so many ways to achieve stealth and to slip past people's uh, consciousness, like their awareness. That's all it is. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's interesting. So. So what is stealth but like if i was going to stealthily infiltrate an area currently in game i think on foot is the best way to do it it's just very very time consuming very time consuming like we talked about 
Yeah, and three in the current patch that we're in right now, which is three sixteen, you know, uh, three sixteen one soon, TM. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean stealth, right? Like a, 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 an individual player on the ground cannot be detected. So when you talk about drop insertion platforms, right? Because you still have to, you, like, you can't walk from one planet to another planet, right? Like you have yeah. to be unfortunately in a ship. Not unfortunately, I guess it's pretty cool to be in spaceships, but you have to be in a ship. And so for us to get to that starting point for that patrol, right, mm-hmm. those those are the platforms that we're sort of discussing today. Am I, am yeah. I on the nail with that one? Yeah, actually, the nail any type of insertion method. So patrolling yeah. is one way. Um, probably the the most, the, the best way to be undetected would be on foot. Mm-hmm. Um, the next way, I mean, insertion methods... There's so many in Star Citizen. We yeah. do. Oh my gosh. We do our dynamic drops where we we jump out of a. It's more paratrooper style where we jump out of the back of a moving ship. Um, it's going certain velocities. Or, it's off the ground a certain time, but it, it's very surprising for the enemy. We found they. Yes. It's very very. When, you, when you're thinking about it. attacking a target, right? You need three things. You need speed, violence, uh, violence of action, and uh, surprise. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes, Those things are, are interchangeable things that can come and go ebb and flow with the with with the overall objective. Like when you hit the ground, you may lose surprise. You, yeah. Motherfuckers know you're there. There is no surprise. There is no stealth. Mm-hmm. Fuck your stealth and surprise. But that's where speed and violence of action come into play. Right. So, yes, speed quickly getting to that door. Violence of action. Once you're in that airlock coming out so quickly and so violently that people on the inside have no fucking clue what's happening. Right. Right. And so if you zoom out to that, that what dynamic insertion, right? Like that's what that is. It's the same thing. It's flying over very quickly, mm-hmm. violently being shoved out of a vehicle onto the objective. And, and there's your speed and surprise or your, your speed and violence of action. Like yeah. your surprise is gone. They know a ship's there. Right. So speed and violence of action. Right. Up. And even if they know you're coming, if you hit them with enough speed and enough violence of action, I would argue that you can achieve surprise. Yes. Because it's so, can, so fast. You know it's coming, but it's so fast and it hits so hard. Like if you're in a boxing ring, like you know you're going to get punched. But that guy <laughs> surprises the shit out of you because it's right. so fast and it's so violent. You're like, oh. Yep. And it jars you. So they they know like we've been in some ops where they know we're they're defending a, a a site of interest on the ground, like a bunker or an outpost um, or a cave, right? They know we're coming. They know we're coming. So we're like, well, we can't really like surprise them sneaking in. It just takes too long. So if we hit them with enough speed and enough violence of action, they will be surprised. They'll be on yep. their heels like, whoa. And <laughs> so that's one method we use is an aerial drop insertion. Uh, we can do static where the ship comes to a hover. Very, very popular and very easy to do on Art Corp because there's just rooftops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it has to be static pretty much. Um, and then we do very, they're very, in, in the sense of like a ship to ship, <clears throat> it's very slow because ships are moving super fast. But in order yeah, to Yeah, you're not drop, doing full SCM here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about, just so you guys can play around with this, if you're under about 50 meters is the absolute cap. If you're on a, a high G planet, like with more gravity, I would definitely stay around 30 meters off the deck. And it's hard if you want to hit us up for more of this stuff. There, this is a this is a science, like down at the very very tiny details. So if you're listening to this and you're interested in rapid troop deployment or insertion methods, come chat with us. Come hang out. We'll come show you our whole process. Um, we have some things perfected. It's hard to p- keep something perfected with all the changes they're doing patch to patch. So we have to like reinvent it every time. And some some organizations do similar things. And um, I think we have a, an excellent handle on it. Um, I know the the OAC too, the, another group we roll with, they do that insertion method as well, a little differently. Um, but yeah, we it, it works. And it's sometimes unreliable. You have to have a really good pilot on the stick who's not afraid to take charge and tell people to shut up and, like, get you safely to the ground. So, right. yeah, come come hang out with us with that. But it is possible. What's our max speed on that? I know we're about 30 meters off the deck is, like, prime. High G, right, you can yeah, get Yeah, I'm not sure 50. about the speed. I'm, again, I'm a 
grunt, not grunt, a okay. pilot. But um, I our pilots have that dialed in. I mean, it's it. Yeah. I would say it's probably about what, what is it? Is SCM is? Uh, I remember oh, SCM space combat maneuver like maneuver speed. Is that yeah, what that stands for? yeah, something like that. <laughs> We so should probably know more about that's it. like about a middle at your, of your throttle bar, right? Or your power thrust bar. Yeah, SCM is like the right before it gets it gets into the red area. I think. Okay, so about fifty percent down from yeah, you know, fifty percent to twenty five percent down from that is probably about the speed they're going. Uh, I mean, I couldn't tell you meters. I would per second, say but. it's somewhere in the neighborhood of eighty to ninety meters a second. I think is what yeah. I've been heard. So if you're going, so it's that relatively fast, slow, but. It looks super fast though when you're in your first person, like holding a gun, like, yeah. "Oh shit, we're jumping out of this," <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, it's well, fun. And, and the reason we bring all this up is because we're trying to define to you, the listener, like what we define as a drop ship insert platform, right? Mm-hmm. Like these these are the things that define it. It's not a drop seat or a jump seat that defines a drop ship for us. It's these things that it can do and and do well that allow us to use it as a drop ship, right? Yeah. So I don't care what CIG calls it. I don't care what the community says it is or isn't. Th- this is our definition of what we feel a- an insert platform should and is should be capable of doing. Yeah, maybe we should stop calling them drop ships and just call them an insertion platform. Maybe, yeah. Right. I mean, maybe to break the mold of that. Yeah, just to, yeah, to kind of, <laughs> you know, free up some thinking on it. Like, oh, man, sure. you know. Like uh, I, if 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 a car, if an Argo raft, like has some cool features that would allow us to do an insert like that, like I would use that. You yeah. Know? Um. Like clipping those cables that on the back of us and letting us dangle there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hitting a button and we drop and the table cable disconnects. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. Or just like drop a whole box if we could fit in a cargo bay, <laughs> a cargo box. I mean. Yeah, you drop the box. Just drop a box. Out I'm there. down. Yeah, because you can already kick out those box. Like, logistically, we've done resupply training like that where we'll kick out yep. a box out of the back of a C2 or whatever. Um, we've even had people catch them with a tractor beam. So, like, you could do that. What if you could <laughs> What if you could get in that box and just be delivered <laughs> like a UPS package? Signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so insert aerial insert platforms for us have have a, a, a checklist of of sort of arbitrary things that oh, daft and i feel are what make it a good insertion platform right yeah and it's not one of those is seats how no, it's, it's, it's that's maybe a part seats. of it I don't, it's not yeah i guess but like there's ways to defeat that you know um mm-hmm. until we get push pull mechanics bracing like yeah, yeah we understand bracing. that high high g maneuvers CIG? will toss you on your ass we understand that um yeah. a good dropship pilot will need to do some high g maneuvers from time to time mm-hmm. but it's 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 timing that when when do i do it and right. if i tell if i tell these troops to prepare for a drop and they stage next to a door or they brace somehow in the future if we can actually grab the wall. Um, right now, we'll tell you straight up, it might be a little cheesy to some people. I don't know. Because, like, I think you were saying it the other day, right? Chris Roberts, like, envisions everyone sitting in a seat all the time. Or something right. like that. Like, that's so weird. Which, but, shame on you. Yeah, you you get ready to rapidly leave the aircraft. Like, you have to, even, even in a, a paratrooper, right? They don't just like stay seated until the moment they have to jump. They stand up, they hook up, they shuffle to the door in preparation to exit. No one's just like, all right, green light. And everyone has to unbuckle and then stand up, hook up all in one motion. Right. You know, you you prep to leave that craft. So having a jump seat, drop seat, whatever you want to call it is cool. But like, I still need to get up and get off the ship in a timely fashion. Right. So. When we when our pilots say stage for drop, that's what we're mean. That's basically our stand up, yeah. hook up, shuffle to the door. And he tells us where. If it's a if it's a cutty, he says port, starboard, exit, if depending on what he's envisioning us for the drop, or he says tail exit. So we go and, and stage there. And then you can brace in the game currently by using the at ease emote. <laughs> if you're emoting in at ease, we've talked about it before, there's no gravity effects on you. 
So that's None. us bracing. That's us finding a solution to make to play the game our way. Right. Right. We're not going to let not them the dictate. way that Chris Roberts wants me to sit in a seat with no armor on. Yeah. So does it look kind of wonky because we're all standing there while the pilot does loop to loops, you know, and we're just at parade rest? Sure, but it's extremely effective and gets us to the ground. Because mm-hmm. again, yeah, we're playing a video, and game. you might be asking yourself, well, why would you use an emote when you could just go prone? Well, and I believe prone is an all, also another good way to brace in the game it is. Uh, to prevent some of those mechanics as well. However, um, if you're stacking people in a row, and do you stick. want them like this. Or do you want them like this so they can quickly get out of the bird, right? And so now we're talking about exiting from this aerial insertion platform. And that is another, like, consideration for us when we're thinking about those platforms. And, yeah, uh, you know, how quickly and expeditiously can people get out of these, these ships, right? Mm. Yeah, and then also just the, the survivability of that. That aircraft, right. that, that insertion platform. <laughs> like, is, can it get away yeah. safely? I mean, you could say that a Titan could take three guys and drop them off. Yeah, there can. was a discussion about, what, it was one of the origin ships, like a 315 or some shit can hold six dudes. Yeah. Yeah, something one like of the, that, and you can exit. But that's a side door exit. Like, that's not, that's one at a time, right? Mm-hmm. So each dude has to jump out. So when you're flying, you now have to, like, if you're piloting and the jump mastering which by the way if you don't know what a jump master is he's the one that's like looking out and going yep that's the lz okay i got 40 (laughs) fucking dudes that got to kick out of this thing uh let's start kicking them out now so they all hit the fucking lz right like that's what a jump master is supposed to do yeah a pilot in star citizen can do that but if they're under fire it you know it's easier just to maybe pass that billet off to somebody else right uh, if able right um, and it also depends but again, on how many people we can back, field. Right. Right. Going back to that 315, like that's a single door, a one man exit that one person at a time can leave. So if you pack six people in there, yeah, cool. Rock on, brother. But you are now having to exit six people as they turn corners and as they go through gravity grids. And it's a fucking nightmare. It is. So, in my opinion, the 315 is not. Yes, uh, it can be used. Someone's going to sit there and argue with me. Yes, in a pinch, you could use it. Is it the most preferred platform? Fuck no. There might be a mission where that's the perfect delivery system, right? Maybe. Where you could set people out one at a time. Um, Maybe, right? Uh, But when we're talking about rapidly deploying, it's not the best option. So it's on the list. Like, Like, we've listened to some people in the Star Citizen community. They make a list of these drop ships. Specific, specific ships, not ships. all ships, specific ships. Right, and it's like it's like this small. There's like four yeah. on there, and like it's kind of it's kind of candle. It's it's just this big bottleneck of like mentally getting hung up. Like, oh, it can only use these ships as a drop ship. No, but CIG said this is a but, drop yeah. ship, so I have to use it like that. Yeah, it's this way. No, everything is a drop ship. That's like our number one rule. You can use anything if it. If the mission calls for it, you to jump out of a mining ship, you could do it. We can do it. Yep. We have the procedures in place. We know the game mechanics. Jump well out of a starfare, check. No problem. Right now, preferred method for rapidly insertion is a little bit different. That the three fifteen I or whatever it is, that tiny little ship, could we do it? Yeah, in a pinch, would we? Fuck yeah, we would. But and because we have the procedure in place and we know. Okay, we've we've maybe we've jumped out of it once or twice before just to get that data. Now we know, hey, we can do this. It's not preferred, but it will work. Yeah. So it's in and our I think it's important belt. for you as an organization to define what your drop procedure is before you go and start taking definitions That's or, or creating definitions on what a drop ship is. Because if you mm-hmm. don't know how to exit or what you're going to do when you exit or how you want to exit or with what equipment and vehicles you want to exit with, why even define a dropship? Why even say a Valkyrie is the best dropship in the game if you've never dropped troops out of that ship, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we use the Pisces all the time. I think a lot of people Pisces do. is so good. It's so tiny, too. It's uh, really vulnerable, but, like, it moves quick, and it, it mm-hmm. moves very fast in the atmosphere. 
has a very small signature like <clears throat> in theory it has a small signature right, right? like and it can attach I, there to are plenty ships. of times that i've taken four to six people in a pisces landed got to an objective and nobody fucking knew we were there right there's your stealth yeah you know or, or get within you know 12 to 10 to, to eight clicks from jump town in a pisces and then scuttle it right uh, right. One way trip, not the best for or like don't asset or don't delivery. scuttle it. Yeah, let those aircraft over jump town go fucking see my Pisces because I'm already halfway to the objective and they're <laughs> yeah. pulled off, which makes room for my guys to come in. Yeah, and they they do so blow. Please, they'll by blow all means, go check out my Pisces. Yeah, let them think, let them wonder. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so there's there's a lot of methods. There's a lot of platforms that are good delivery systems to get troops on the ground. Um, and that, so aerial platforms is one way we can also drop vehicles. That's a very common tactic, mm -hmm. um, used over jump town. They, they just kick out a cyclone out of the back of an A2 or C2 or M2 way up high. You just drop yep. it and it falls. Cause the way the fall damage takes right now, is that going to go away? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't imagine Chris Roberts being like, Oh, that's okay. A vehicle can fall from atmosphere and, and survive. Yeah, no, I it, and it's it's a less preferred method for me personally, because uh, because of that reason, because right? like it that will go, will away. go away. And you that's know what why. I mean? So it's like, why practice something that you can use for a couple of patches and then it goes away and now you've just wasted all your time and like, muscle ah. memory learning that process when you could have actually been learning, you know, like what is a safe distance that a vehicle potentially drop out of right yeah. and practicing that now, like a low flyover at speeds kicking vehicles out, I think is a lot more practical. Correct. Um, yeah. Cause like, I mean, and if they just had some tools to allow for parachutes, they, they kick tanks and shit out of planes all the time. And they have like 10 yeah. parachutes on them, you know? Um, so, which I want to talk about that today. There's a few things I would like to get out in the open there. Ah, once okay. we get done with this vehicle insertion stuff. Okay. Right. On, um, right but okay. So let's talk about those ships, right? Yes. We're a uh, FPS podcast. And we said the S word. Right, but ships here we have a lot of S through, words again through the focal lens of of an F, not a pilot. I don't give a fuck about the pilot. Through the binoculars fuck of pilots, a front. except the mighty eight, they're, they're cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but through the lens of like, what do I want to ride in as an infantry dude? Like, you, you've got your basics. You got your cutties. You got your Valks, right? And we all know those. I, there is not a YouTube channel that in existence that talks about star citizen that has not beat those two drop ships, right. Or insertion platforms to fucking death. We got it. CIG says they're drop ships. Ergo they're drop ships moving on. No, we got caveats. Oh, sorry. I, I thought you were going to keep finishing a thought. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, moving on from that. I agree. Like it's, it's been talked at ad nauseum. We all know. Um, yes. So, yeah, moving on from that, let me ask you a question, Echo. What do you think is the fastest way to get troops onto an objective? What what platform or ship, we'll call it, is the best way, the quickest way to dump troops? I I don't like the tag. I don't like the question being tagged with quickest. I like the 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 tag of efficiency. What is the mm. most efficient okay. way, right? Because when you think about drop ships or insertion methods, they have to be able to defend themselves, right? To yes. a certain degree. And you could argue that, um, I, I know we're moving on, but the Valk has a way to do that. The Cuddy even to a degree has a way to do that as well. Albeit small, the steel may be more so than the black, but fucking black for life. Um, <laughs> love it. Uh, but the, there's a certain amount of, other things that you need to consider it's armor it's shields right uh aside from its turrets and its pilot controlled guns right like what are ways that troops can safely be covered or the ship can cover itself while it's moving into the objective because a drop ship will never not be molested by enemy fire it's it, like you just that's one of the considerations you have to take into account when you're talking about insertion aerial insertion platforms right yeah so in the scope of Star Citizen, my favorite, most expeditiously and efficient way to get to that with all of that stuff that we just talked about for the last however long we've talked about it is the Retaliator. The Retaliator. Aegis Retaliator. Yep. I think it's so often overlooked 
as its dropship potential because, yep. because it is it's it's the retaliator. It's been in game forever. And here's why. Yes, I know the modules aren't in. I got it. I know that CIG is defining again a module specifically for that. But I'm going to argue with you right now. If you're listening to this and you're about to fucking get those little fingers going on the on the comments that Italia is not a good dropship, put yourself in the torpedo bay and have your pilot open the fucking torpedo bay. Yep. Yep. Hover over an objective. Retaliator swoops in, hovers at a safe height. Pilot hits the missile button. That bay door opens. All the troopers drop at the same time in close proximity with each other. So they can, you know, survive. High survivability as well. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. I would even argue if you don't want to do uh, dynamic drops, right? Up in the air drops, fine. Land it. Press the button. Yeah. Your troops are still getting out way fucking faster than any drop ship with mm-hmm. drop seats or jump seats. Yep. There's no that vehicle could now take off immediately after hitting the missile button. Yep. And its time on target is lessened so significantly to any other ship in the game. Yeah, it is so fast. It's so beautiful, too. And from the point of a POV of a, of a grunt, it's fantastic as well. You're standing there, it drops, and you're, you're already in the action like that. Done. There's no getting up out of a seat. There's no staging, possibly getting, like, tossed around. You're already locked in. We use that at ease emote. You know, to brace because there's no mechanic for it now. So that's how we do it. Um, well, now let's drop. talk about some of the other things, right? That we talked about armor. Uh, correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong right now, but it is has one of the highest armor values in currently the game. in the in the current patch. If not the highest, it's Shields. definitely one of the highest. Shields are solid. Shields are are up there too, mm-hmm. right? Size two. I think so. Yeah, it's decent. So, shields. Somewhere around in there, I might be right, but it's decently shielded. Mm-hmm. Um, and how many fucking turrets does it have? Let's see. Top, two bottom, two sides. I think it has six. Five or six? Five? Six turrets? <laughs> I'm sorry. Did somebody say a hammerhead? Yeah. Yeah, hammerhead has six. You know what I mean? Six, six guns. So now, it ha- has maybe not the size of guns mm-hmm. that a hammerhead has, but it has almost the same amount of gun points as a hammerhead. It does, yeah. And it can expeditiously drop troops. Now. And torpedoes. It drop vehicles. No, no, two. no, 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 yeah, no vehicles. It's all, all person. Oh, yeah. Also, size nine yeats. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like if we're talking about a, a very specifically a platform for inserting, inserting infantry, right? Why? Why is the tally often overlooked or never even mentioned? Like because CIG has not I'll tell you why. CIG hasn't defined it as a dropship. Yep. And, and therefore, they're... you have been not thinking outside the bun, not sponsored by Taco Bell. But if you want to, Taco Bell, we're open to it. Yeah. Um, Cheese Gordita Crunch. Oh, dude, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Shit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're right, dude. People aren't thinking outside the box. They're not. They're not. They're, they're because... like, well, Prowler. Yeah, they're waiting. Well, Pro- I mean, Prowler has doors. Yeah. And it has jump seats. And it has defense like hard cover for troops to get out on. Yeah. It's they're waiting for the definition to, to be given to them. Um, and that's what letting shit be defined for you. Yeah. Define it yourself. So I'm, I'm excited for the retaliator to get the gold pass. I'm excited for the modules, but I'm, I'm not really excited for the drop, the drop ship module. Do you know why? Right. Cause I don't think they're going to hit the mark. I don't think, I don't are. think so either. It's um, going to be, and we, it opens, and then everyone's in a jump seat, and they still have to get out of the jump seat. So on right. station, okay, uh, green light, dr- it drops down. That That's going to go, zzz, one, 1,000, two, 1,000. And then everyone's going to go, uh, get out of their seat, hold Y, and we're going to have some long-ass mechanic of getting out. Like, have you ever have you ever got out of a Carrick pilot seat? Yeah. It's yeah. Prepare to make a sandwich or something during it. You're like, okay, get in. Yeah. Uh, what I want from CIG <laughs> is less animations. Yeah, right. Quicker. Like less. You know, there was a there was an ISC that they talked about. They were one of their concerns about like bounty hunting and all this shit was um play or or uh, it was the uh, 
medical mechanics, right? Yeah. So one of the concerns was like, how do we move players? And they don't want other players to be affected by, uh, they don't want players to be affected by other players moving their character around, right? Like they want to limit that as much as possible. Then mm. why the fuck is CIG doing that to us? Right? Limiting like why us. are they defining what my character is doing? I got it. Sometimes there has to be, yeah. um, you know, you spend all this money to rent out the fucking uh, mocap lab. I understand Chris Roberts, right? So now you feel like you have to do an animation <laughs> for fucking everything. But it, it, in reality, it doesn't need to be that way, right? Like it, you stop controlling my character, mm -hmm. CIG. Let me control my character in the same way you don't want other players to control players' characters, right? right. In the same and by way, doing that, Kind of the same way that like some games do like a reload animation, like they have a, a reload right. and then they have like a speed reload where you could double tap yeah. R and it it just drops the mag. It does a different animation that saves you time because you're Correct. getting shot at. Like if they had something like that, if I want to get in my ship seat, cool. But if I want to get in and out super fast, like right. give me some button. Let me combo. double tap. Yeah, like I gotta do this, that, this, 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 like that's faster still than watching an animation like uh get out of the chair. All right, let me stand up and stretch. Mm, okay, just set the self destruct button. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. No, like, let me get out. Ten seconds self destruct, and I took me nine seconds right. to get out of the seat. So, if the retaliator drop module does not have a one touch button for the pilot, green light, and it it like it shoots you out, it goes and like kicks you out of the seats. I'm not interested. Sorry, not interested. I would be okay. Listen, I've already we've already said that mm -hmm. we want. Like we've already demonstrated that vehicles that drop their troops from a door facing down. Yep. Okay, That's what a real of a drop. door opening. Mm -hmm. Right. Is way more expeditious than, uh, th than those doors opening, right? Like yeah. coming out of the bottom of ship and all of that being controlled by a single person. One button is dude. Boop. Done. Set it and forget it. Troops on the ground. Yeah. You know? And you'll see, um, there's going to be video of this because we did like a two hour session of just drop after drop after drop yeah. in a retaliator. We've done it before, but we did it this patch and we tested a, a bunch of new stuff because things change patch to patch. Um, right. And we also have a fantastic group of pilots that we're partnered with, the Mighty 8th Air Force. They, they fuck shit up. So we're like, hey, what's the difference between a hammerhead and a retaliator? They're like, not much as right. far as our procedures go. So we're like, hell yeah, we're in business. So now we could take a retaliator and just be just be more rapidly inserted. We, we've jumped yes. out of ha their hammerhead as well. They have that science down. So their pilot, Sufi, on that hammerhead, he can get us wherever he wants in a hammerhead. Um, I would argue that the, 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 the dropship, I want to get to this before I forget about it, but yeah. I would argue that the dropship module on the retaliator is going to operate much like the cargo do bay door on a hammerhead or a Connie, right? It's going yeah. to drop down. We're going to be in those seats. And then we have to exit. The way I am. Yeah. Right. Which is not any different from like anything we currently have in the game that CIG, CIG has designated a drop ship. Right. Yeah. Um, but to me, if you could press a button and that door drops and now it's on the individual infantryman to get up and exit, I would argue that there's it. Yes, there is some t lull there. Right. But if mm. it has extra things like storage for guns and all that other stuff, uh, like sure, sure. maybe that's a nice thing. It's a trade off. Um, yeah. But it's still better than sitting in the uh, troop area of uh, a Valkyrie Valkyrie waiting for that door, getting up, waiting for and waiting for that animation, waiting for the door to open whenever it open, decides to open, <laughs> walking to the back of a Valkyrie. Popping that door open and then walking out and trying not to die be because the gravity grids are all fucked up, right? Yeah, or just even like, going out the side that, door too. It's like that's still time. Yeah, yeah, it, that's a it's good still, point. Man. And I would argue even with the drop set modules, I would probably still my t retaliator would probably still uh -huh. have torpedoes on it, just because that that opening of the door is just so, so much, much better. Faster. Now, somebody made a mention there was it the other day when we were doing this that. I bet you Chris Roberts, like, does something. CIG does something to prevent that. I would uh, agree. Put, you know what I mean? Like, wave hands some kind of, like, magnetic lock thing or some shit to prevent. But in, until they do, like, 
that's a drop ship. And why not use, why not, like, it, it blows my mind that we're playing a, a space game that is, how many fucking thousands, hundreds of years are we're, we in? Almost a thousand, a thousand years into the almost future. Almost a thousand years in the future. And not a single human engineer thought, huh, well, if we give them little thrusters like we have on tiny ships on their belts, but then we let them fall out from the ship, oh, that could be a really good, yeah. uh, that would be a really expeditious way to leave a ship. Well, yeah, I mean, if if you're designing all these these things in space, like, if we're, well, let's get a little real here. Like, think about all this safety equipment that would be needed to get a mm -hmm. pilot who ejected at very high speeds to the ground. Think about the technology we have now and then add 900 years to it. You think we're going to improve that? You, you bet your ass we will. Do you think we'll use an okay. atmospheric parachute? If we do, it's going to be completely different. Um, right. Could it be a thruster? I mean, if Elon Musk can make a rocket come back and land on the planet, like, do you think he could make a small thruster pack to help a pilot's chair descend slower, it, right? It, and to to defeat this as, like, an idea that somebody would always use a jump pack all the time, forever, and everywhere, put a limit on it. Yeah. Right? Our suits have limited oxygen. So we have to use, use a pen to refill our oxygen. Why can't we do the same thing with little CO2 thruster canisters? Yeah. That it's a one time, boop, you or press it, and that's it. And it's not even that much thrust. It's just enough to like stop survive. your descent, right? Yeah. Like slow it. Like uh, the way I see it is like if we had a backpack, like a little jet pack, maybe it's a one time use or it's refillable, but like give me a backpack right. on my back that has like hardly any storage space because it's a jet pack, right? Right. Like I will forego less storage to rapidly insert. Like there's a trade off. Mm -hmm. They could really, they could really make this a fantastic little mechanic um, that would just increase gameplay. You know, give us a. You could a, add. A it could be gravlev tech. Yeah, it could. That's battery fed, right? That you would need <laughs> yeah. to recharge the battery or rechange the batteries out of. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many ways you could go about doing that that doesn't involve like strings attached to a piece of fabric that you have to hold on to, right? Like, right. let's, again, think outside the box here. Yeah, um, same thing with The other thing I would love to grabbers. see the Retaliator module do is um, instead of that whole platform coming, or maybe it's another platform, right? Like, maybe mm. that that compartment is a thing, right? Lowers. Like, I think at this time, like, we're all theory crafting, but from what we've seen and what we know and have read about it, that, that platform is going to lower. It is. You can see the mechanics see in the arm. No, you can see the, yeah. the hydraulic things in there in the in the like three D model of it that they show. But I would argue, <clears> what <throat> if you made another module that just had the seats from the prowler, right? So those stand up seats. Yeah. And you put those in the center line of the retaliator or another ship, and then you let that door open, and as soon as the player presses a button, they fall from that jump seat and exit, right? Yeah. They get shit out the bottom. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the pilot could open the door and you could literally see your feet dangling for a little bit. You're like, oh, here yep. we go. And then on your command, whenever you feel, you hit it and go. Fucking boop. So for now, current state of the game, Retaliator is, it's been our favorite for a while. And My favorite. Yeah. We've, we've just noticed the community discussing some drop ships and what constitutes a drop seat or a dr jump seat and what's important about chairs and shit. They're the exact same thing. So <laughs> yeah. So in current time right now, three sixteen. They do the exact. There the are thing. no differences between those two seats, as far as I know. I may be wrong. No, you're not wrong. And if 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 they do change them in the future, if they make a jump seat different than a drop seat, then it's worth talking about. But if right. not, I can go sit. I can go sit at the table with the chessboard, and still yeah. be locked in and not and be G safe is the term. Right. Um, I can go sit on a bed. I can lay down on a bed. I can climb up halfway on a ladder and be G safe. I can go to parade yep. rest and be G safe. Um, you can emote. There's a couple other emotes like sitting. That's a good one too. An emote is fantastic. You could argue, again, those are cheese things, but until CIG gives us brace and yes. push pull mechanics, it's the what solution. are we to do? Yeah. And it's, I mean, it, honestly, and it's cool that I, I want our pilots to train. We encourage it. And I've been practicing as well because I might fill a dropship pilot role for a, a while as needed mm -hmm. um, because it is very pertinent to ground gameplay to have a good dropship pilot. So that's what I think I might focus on for the next little bit. But I've been trying to get my ship and encouraging our other pilots to stay under three G's because that's when you start getting tossed around. 
And so yep. w- w- the communication and the systems we have in place, like, hey, I say stage for drop, and I'm holding my Gs under three before I enter a combat area. And then I hear from the jumpers, hey, we're staged. I know they're braced. I know they're all in parade rest or they're sitting or whatever the ship is. So I can maneuver. So now I, I come in hot, bust some turns, you know, get up to four, five, six Gs, doing some crazy shit, come over the objective, and when I say red light, I keep it under three Gs because they might have to get up out of a chair, do something, depending on the ship. So I'm really conscious about my Gs. I'm G-conscious. G-conscious, G-conscious. Baby. G-conscious. W-G-conscious. G-conscious pilots. Uh, I, I, I want to just sort of defeat that, right? So if yeah. you hit you hit red light and you're being attacked by four ballistas and have to make a fucking quick move, what yeah. contingencies do we have in place? Uh, we yell brace, 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 uh, or like abort, abort drop. It's uh, Does that mean we have to go to a drop seat or a jump seat to be, be, be braced? Right. Now, here's so are you tell Wait, hold on, Dap. Yeah, yeah. So hit, you're hit telling me. me mm-hmm. Hold up. My mind is blown right now. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me. That a ship doesn't have to have a jump seat or a drop seat to be considered a drop ship. Exactly. You're fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> That's Dude, dumb. Uh, That's a du- that is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Which one? That a, 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 that a drop ship has to have can't doesn't have oh. to have a drop seat or jump seat to be a drop ship. That, I mean. Oh, it's dumb. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, seriously. No, the, the, if you're defining and, and you're using a ship that CIG hasn't defined as a drop ship, what, yeah. What fucking universe are you from? <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. I'm confused, but yeah, because <laughs> I think I misheard you for a second. But yes, we we hear uh, sarcasm. And this, people yeah, there. sarcasm. Well, I don't okay. know if you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's hard because I have to look at the camera, but you're down here on my. So I'm like, yeah. I, was like, I couldn't oh, miss your body language. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious right now? <laughs> My mind is blown. No. I, you just, I'm so blown right I, now. Yeah, I blew your mind. Just a simple concept. A, a dropship or a, a, an insertion platform is not defined by the seats currently. And so if you it took is, a mechanic mm-hmm. and you found a way within the game to recreate that mechanic in a different way. Yes. You did that? Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, we did it as a group. I can't take credit for it. Yeah. Yeah, we, we used wow, a little loophole that might be considered cheese. I don't think it is. I and here's again, I, I will never consider that cheese because CIG has not given us the tool to do that. Exactly. But they've put in a point of contention for us to figure out. And guess what? We fucking solved it. We did. So our contingency, right? If you're staged for a drop and you're not braced because I've communicated to you we're we're about to drop. Um, I'm keeping it under three G's. Then I get a wave off. Somehow something happens, and that dropship pilot has to boogie. I yell, brace, 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 or like uh, like abort drop, brace, brace. And like if you can, if that's communicated to you, now you have to do something to brace. And Chris yep. Roberts in the game, they want you to go find the nearest jump seat. Like, oh, uh, then you're playing musical chairs. Okay, uh, am I in? And then some guy who was, who was like, not paying attention, and you know, he has his he has his hands off his keyboard, stuff in a cookie in his mouth. He's like, oh shit, because that happens. Yeah. To, like uh, someone's full gonna disclosure, miss it. At red lights, sometimes I take a drink of water or maybe go get a beer. Right? Yeah, like, but the point is, red light. With our workaround, you're braced. And I'm you're good. Not, you're good, baby. I'm but if set. if you're not braced for whatever reason, like you're about to run off the ship, that's different because you have to run, right? But when yeah, anyway. So now we're getting into the minutiae. Yeah, you're bit. not playing duck, duck, goose to try to find yeah. something. You either go prone or you go at ease. Yeah. And guess what? Simple. It works, too, if you're walking down the hallway of a hammerhead and the pilot's like, brace, brace, brace. You just dive drop on prone. the ground. Just drop prone instantly. And that saves you from so like, potentially taking damage in the future. You're yep. going to get hurt for that. And then also, right now, current state of the game, you will get so many bugs. Just the, the fall down, the knockdown animation. Sometimes you can't pull your weapon out for like five fucking minutes. Yep. So, you know, or so, you get sucked through the side of a ship. Yeah. Yeah. You phase through the wall and you're you're in the engine compartment like halfway, like some kind of so, magic. Yeah. That's not cheese to me. That is using a mechanic that's in the game. I agree with you. To circumvent a broken and well, not broken, a buggy mechanic yeah. that we didn't get anything from CIG. Like they are forcing movement on our character without our approval. 
and didn't give us a way to yeah. say, no, 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 I don't want to move. It's right? my character. It's my choice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my body. Yeah. I mean, I G, we're all subject to G forces in real life. Like right. if you step off a roof, you're going to fall. That's gravity. Well, you know, right? what's funny though, is uh, last time I checked star citizen wasn't real life. Exactly. Um, so. And I, I'm I'm fine. Like if if there if there's G forces that can affect us, I think that's more immersive. I love it. I just yeah, want too. tools to combat it. And if I'm not using those Correct. tools, if I'm not implementing them correctly, then I will fail and get tossed across the Valkyrie cargo bay and break yep. my arm right before a combat op. Like what we're telling you, CIG is you could put all the G forces you want on us. We're not sitting in a jump seat or yep. drop seat because apparently they're different. Right, and if if it's pertinent to sit in a drop seat for X amount of time and then get up, like we'll do what we got to do. That's fine, but like we just need more tools to brace. Like my character should be able to hold on to something and handle high G's. And if it costs me stamina, if it costs me, you know, whatever, um, if it brings right. my what heart rate it? up, if it's harder to do in heavy armor and I can only do it for a certain amount of time, that's cool. I, I'm not gonna be getting spun around like in a g-force test for pilots that's not what we're doing we're it's going to be a slight variations in and in, in pockets of powerful g's and then getting troops on the ground yeah so yeah we the drop seats and the jump seats have a place in the universe because like when we're not dropping and the pilot needs to be in combat for the next five minutes yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get in a jump seat you know like right. <laughs> extended periods yeah. of time when you're not when you're what uh what's the word I'm looking for? It's like uh the word for unimportant um um infantry? Uh, grunt? No, nah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh personnel that's not needed. Like if you're not manning not a gun essential. or running an engineer tool, uh, not essential, thank you. Not essential personnel, put your butt in a seat. You exactly. know what I mean? Let them fight it out for a minute. And then when mm -hmm. it's time to jump, then you can get up out of your seats. And that's why I feel those seats are useful. Is yes. for that type of extended, like movement in a ship at high G maneuvers. Right. But when I'm about to jump, like I'm not sitting in the seat. Yeah. I'm up out the seat. I'm at the exit hole, baby. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. To Rifle have, in hand, med pen body in hand, whatever's have pertinent. Newtonian physics thrust upon me. You know. Yes. So, yeah, that's our workaround. We don't do, we don't constrain ourselves. We don't confine ourselves to this box that's popular about if it has drop seats, it's a jump ship or it's a drop ship or whatever. It's a troop transport because it has seats. Like, you know, basically there's an old uh, an old CQB adage called "fuck your couch." <laughs> right? We don't care about your couch. We're gonna sh we're gonna we're gonna flip it Shoot over. It. We're gonna kick it over. We're gonna like move. You're gonna bust your table up. Like, yeah. You, that, that's it. So fuck your seats. <laughs> we're not going to use yeah. them how you want them us to use them. Nope. We're going to find a workaround. I, and I would argue that, you know, uh, to us, to you and I, the way that we define a drop ship is can it defend itself for how long? Mm -hmm. And within that, right. That category, how many guns, uh, how many, how much, she, how many, sh like, how are the shields? How is the armor? Right. The other thing that we didn't really talk about is maneuverability. Right, which yeah. is, I would argue, pretty important for a dropship. Very. Also, but the then, other half of a dropship can it be used for exfil for getting out quickly. Well, yeah. That, so that's another topic we got to hit too is mm -hmm. um, pickup. Right. So um, let's talk about the uh, maneuverability of of these dropships. Right. Like, how important is that? Right. When considering a, a, a vessel for moving troops very or, important or not moving troops i don't want to get like not i'm not talking about troop transport i'm not talking about from yeah. planet to planet i'm talking about rapid it's time insertion. to go baby yeah baby you're about to get fucking thrust into hell let's go yeah um dropping what on the objective hot rapid insertion on on near the yeah exactly. on or near yeah um what is how important is that maneuverability factor oh dude it's so important because if you're not maneuverable enough you're a tar you're a sitting duck, right? But if you're too maneuverable, like then I gotta stand up and fight the G forces even more. Like a Pisces, the one downside of a Pisces is that like if the pilot even just like s thinks about sneezing, he's like, I might sneeze. Whoa, everyone's on their ass. Like <laughs> yeah. if you're not in one of the two seats there or braced. So right. 
if you have to un- unbrace to get out of the ship and that pilot like, oh, makes one thrust maneuver, like it'll toss you over. Like, mm-hmm. so maneuverability, there's like a sweet spot. And honestly, I think after flying the retaliator for the last two days with you guys, the retaliator is slow, but it's so smooth. It's so yeah. smooth. I've been watching my G and I'm like, I'm right. Of, I ba- barely come above three, two. It's like 3.4. Yeah. So it will still toss you a little bit, but like, and I'm getting into the well, places I need to do. It's, it's good. The tally Slow. has the VTOL, right? Has VTOL as well. So mm-hmm. how, how, let me ask this question. How effective is the VTOL uh, pointed down versus pointed to the rear versus say something like uh, a black or a Vol- Valkyrie? Right. Yeah. So the, that's a great question. Um, here we are talking about ships, but this is very pertinent to ground operations. Um, VTOL specifically defining what we use to take troops. What we use for insertion, right? Yes, it's fantastic. So, um, the Cuddy Black has a lot of power. The Cutlass chassis, I'll say, has a lot of power on the vertical takeoff, but it has. If you're in VTOL, it has virtually no no thrust forward unless you're using it like a helicopter and like tilting your nose down and essentially pushing yourself forward. Um, so if you go into VTOL, you better be like right above the objective because you're coming down and you can just, um, on my, my sticks, I have a, a, a tilted. So instead of, I have dual sticks instead of straight up, I have my left tilted so I can just up thrust. Like I'm riding a motorcycle. I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so when I come down in a cutty black, I just up thrust, just, just kind of just kind of probe it a little bit and it, and I can land pretty softly. And then the takeoff, I will hit the VTOL first. So, cause it takes about, it's like one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000 for those, the, the engines to go completely horizontal. And as that's happening, I'll hit the VTOL and then I'll thrust up and forward. So as the engines are, are turning, I'm getting a ton of vertical and then forward. I'm just throwing myself out there and it's really quick off the ground. So the cutlass for like X filling, those V tolls are super important. Everyone's loaded, braced, boom, it's off the ground so fast. Same thing with a Valkyrie. Dude, the Valkyrie V tolls are fun. You you switch the V tolls in, it's it's kind of a boat trying to maneuver. You want to bank hard to the left or turn around. You fl- you bank, flip it into V toll, and then thrust up as you turn, and it and it shoots, dude. It it literally goes, poof. it moves like that. So as far as dodging, throwing countermeasures. A good a good Valkyrie pilot who understands the VTOLs, they can really maneuver in tight spaces above the ground or above a, an objective that you're dropping on um, in atmosphere. Now the Retaliator, though, <laughs> this is why the Retaliator is fucking phenomenal. Okay, because I I am a ground guy, but I do love flying and dropship piloting. So the Retaliator has a ton of vertical th- or forward thrust, and it maintains that forward thrust even in VTOL. And they might rework it. I'm afraid they will. But right now, currently, if I flip into VTOL mode, I have a ton more control when I'm hovering over an objective approaching. Um, but I can still thrust forward at very, very good speeds for a dropship. It's not like crazy fast. And obviously, if I put those VTOL engines into the horizontal stage, I can get a lot more speed. But I lose. So it's not fast. Yeah. Right? Nimble. But it's not as nimble as as maybe the cutlass black or the cutlass chassis but it has more armor and more shields than the cutlass chassis so would you mm-hmm. say that that sort of counterbalances like the i would lack say of mo- mobility but the addition of shields and armor is worth it yes because i think the retaliator's mobility is sufficient and it's smooth and that's what you need for a dropship yeah. pilot if, especially with that if i tap that missile button on my stick it deploys the whole troops like so precisely like you saw, you'll see in the video we post, like there was some very, very small landing spaces on art corp on these, these buildings. And I was just seeing how precise I could be. And I got you guys into some tight spots, right? Just mm-hmm. very quickly too. And then pulled off and was off again, but yeah, you'll see it in the video. So I, I personally think the retaliators maneuverability, if you understand the V tolls, because uh, if your VTOLs are are not engaged and your engines are horizontal, it has no vertical thrust. So you come in hot and you're like, uh, I can't pull up, I can't pull up. You're like, oh yeah, hit the VTOLs. You hit the VTOLs, they they alternate quick, and then you just up thrust and it's like, boo. So I was coming into a building, like here's the lip of the building. 
my nose was coming in and I was like, shit, V told it literally like, it's like a double jump, like boink, <laughs> just lifted yeah. me up. So I think right now, my favorite drop ship in the game is the retaliator because of our methods that we, we don't let the game define what a drop ship is for us. And that retaliator's maneuverability is slower, but it's way more controlled if you're doing it right. And the, the, the precision and the effectiveness, as you called it, of me getting troops on the ground, insane. Plus the armaments, yeah. plus the armor, the shields. Mwah, mwah. It's like a I good mean, pizza. Uh, you know, I'd love <coughs> to see, uh, you know, and at some point maybe we should test each. And I think I did mention that at some point, like, oh, let's set a fucking test up that has the same distance to a predefined target with the same amount of enemies and just see how each performs. Right. Yeah. Um, because the website's broken, so you can't use that for information. Um, you know, <laughs> things like DPS calculator or Urkel games, phenomenal tools, but they don't tell the whole story. Right. And I think if you're coming over from a game like Eve, you're used to reading spreadsheets. And if you only take, a ship at its face value what's what numbers are on the spreadsheets it's a great place to start don't yeah. get me wrong but if you're not actually getting in that ship and flying it and 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 seeing what it's actually capable of you're missing out on like i would argue 25 to 30 percent of the game i mean yeah. in reality i'd almost say 50 percent sometimes because yeah. some 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 group the out there is using some ship that no one else in, in a way that no one else is and right. uh they're, they're so innovating. let's talk about something that's often overlooked um, when it comes to getting those troops that we just dropped off. We did the battle. We fought. We had a good time. Everybody laughed. Everybody died. Um, uh, with the intention or with, with the, the constraint that we're going to have players that are ambulatory, like, ah. like that, that can walk. Right. But we're also going to have players that aren't. So with that in mind, is the retaliator good to get us off the planet? Uh, I think that's where it fails, to be honest. Yeah, um, hard. Hard. Now, we did a cool little thing yesterday. We did a casualty evacuation. We had someone go down in a bunker, and they we call it we call it dead dead. <laughs> All right, that's that's been the the word. We got to find a better word for it. But like, if you go down, if I say Hobbit down, right? Okay, what's your status? I'm in capped incapacitated or like I'm dead, dead. Those, those have been the, the, the terminology we use. Like, no, nope, I'm dead, dead. Cool. So we, this guy died completely. We couldn't res him in time. He died. So, uh, echo took his body with a tractor beam. Cause you can only pick up somebody with a tractor beam if they're dead, which is weird. Mm -hmm. So that's CIG, like trying to protect us. Cause <laughs> yeah, it would be, it would be really annoying. I get it. Listen, yeah, I understand their, their, their argument about it, right? Like yeah. if I'm lying there prone and some guy can like, just start stripping my armor or well, I guess you could do that. But if yeah. I'm lying there prone and like the guy can move me from a place that I don't want to be. And it was a bug that put me there. Like I'm going to be pretty frustrated as a player. So I, oh, I yeah. get it. I understand it, but yes. So it's just weird. But making me do five minute animations. Too. Yeah. So anyway, so we get, we get the bike brings the body in with a tractor beam. Um, and there's ways in zero G you can board a retaliator pretty quickly through the top um, airlock, that's going to be gone though. Um, but you is it can, quickly? no, actually, no, it's not is it actually. quickly. No, it's getting it's doable. back onto the retaliator is, is slow. With minus a few use cases, like, like <laughs> fringe cases is the worst ship to try to get on. It is currently. Yes. And hopefully they fix it in the gold standard, but even that one elevator yeah. is not going to be enough. Um, and I think that's where that drop ship module, right? Like for that, and that thing like coming down is actually going to be pretty yes. fucking useful. You're right? right. So just like the prowler, um, I think the prowler is horrible at getting out expeditiously. Right. I do too. Um, it's for like, maybe like you a, have touch a and single go, ramp, a single ramp down the back. That fits one person. That's f a football field long, by the way. Yeah. Um, it's and, meant to, it's oh, meant well, to exit jump on the into sides. the doors. Yeah. But I think it's better has, at has picking anyone up do troops that, than done dropping. that like first time consistently like fifteen times in a row. Like you, you could argue like, well, um, if I do it right the first time, I'm the fine. Prowler's but pretty if you good miss at that, it. the 
Prowler's pretty okay is it? at it. Yeah. Okay. I haven't so fucked that's with the Prowler because I hate the Prowler. I think the Prowler is better for getting troops out of a hot zone than it is putting them in. Yeah. That's my and opinion. I would argue that that's where those big giant wings that yeah. fold out, right? That's where that stuff is more It's more useful pertinent. Because yeah. that ship is meant to land. And it has decent right? armor and decent guns. So I think the, I right. think the, the Prowler has a place in my book as like an exfil or, a, you know, getting people out of there like an extract sure. vehicle. Um, right. And it can be used, you know, and there's people that can time it very well, right? They come in, they touch down, and guys are jumping out the sides already. Sure. Like, that's cool, but our point is, we already do that today in the 21st century. It's a one-trick pony. It's a one-trick pony. It the is. Prowler is a one-trick pony. Well, same thing with the Cuddy, right? The Cuddy is, we use the Cuddy because of its versatility with vehicles as well, but also mm -hmm. we can jump out the sides and down that back ramp so quickly for our, our intended purpose of, of a, a dynamic moving drop 80 meters a second, 30, 40 yeah. meters off the deck. It's so rapidly we can get troops out. We, the Cuddy will always have a place in our heart. And now the oh, Prowler, you can do the same thing. It's just, it's really hard to do side exits. Sometimes you smack into the ship and then anyway, so the, the Prowler has to land or hover and then you jump out. <clears throat> And then timing that, you can get it down. If you have a good group of guys, you can get it down for sure. Mm -hmm. So as far as, like, getting off the objective, I think the Prowler's solid. Cuddy's good. Like, but the Retaliator is so, easily if we're the bringing, worst. <laughs> you know, wounded, wounded oh, yeah, infantry yeah. back on, right? Is the Prowler really – No. Is that the ship that have we you, want to use? Have you so, ever tried to drag a body up a ramp currently in game? Yes, it is. It Actually, I drug, drug your body last night after you logged off. I drug that motherfucker all the way into Grimhex so I oh, can yeah. save your gear. You're welcome. Oh, thanks, bro. Fuck you, Daft. I don't know if... Uh, oh, did you... You took it and put it in your inventory? Hell yeah, I did. Oh, yeah, you're a bro. Thanks, I had to man. drag your body like 18 <laughs> times down the ramp because the game was like, oh, you're on a different grid? Cool. Oh, you're on a different grid? Yeah. Cool. Oh, you're on a different grid? Cool. Oh, you're on a different grid? Sweet. Nope. It doesn't work. So Walking down the steps of a fucking... <laughs> So there's there is no like reason to to do any type of uh, casualty evacuation unless you're saving someone's gear like you did. Um, right. But in this case, in the story, we, we pulled the guy out of the bunker. You tractor beamed him, and it was actually cool. I opened the torpedo torpedo bay, and you lifted the body up inside the torpedo bay with the tractor beam, and then I closed it, and he was in. So yeah. that was fast. Right. Uh, when when you're loading a dead body. <laughs> Yeah, yeah like, and again, that's just, you know, depending on the tools they give us for medical gameplay, like that may or may not be a useful thing. Like if we're able to move, like get more powerful batteries for our tractor beams, I maybe, and we can move players that are on stretchers, right? Or yeah. um, exp field expedient stretchers, right? Like, sure, I could see that being useful, but mm -hmm. now you have to have a single guy for each dude and who's holding security. So now your numbers are expanding, right? Yeah. So if you say you need one dude to take one guy in a stretcher and put him on there, now you got to have a dude for that dude yeah. with, with the tractor beam security. If you got four down dudes, that's 12 people or 16 people that have to do that. You know what I mean? So yeah. cool use case, like fringe case, but I, I don't know if that goes anywhere, right? Yeah. So getting someone ambulatory is, is probably the best pl way to do it. Like if they're yeah. incapacitated, um, that medic can give them a cocktail that makes them run for a little bit longer, right? So that's right. the best way to do it and just have them board the ship themselves. Um, if they give like a gravity stretcher or something, that's where it would be cool. But as far as, as pertaining to this topic with exfiltrating and, and getting casualties out, like the, the retaliator is horrible for boarding. It's, it's not it's a, God awful. I can get you on the objective super fast. But, like, I'm not going to pick you up till we have that area completely safe. And you can take, right. like, a full minute and a half to two minutes to board. And that, that time could be significantly less if the team is organized. Um, but, yeah. So, you know, mm -hmm. then you have to look at ships that are, quote, unquote, drop ships, right? And we'll, or not drop ships, but just, that just have these giant. So, Carrick is one. It's got a giant ramp with a, with a bay, a vehicle bay. Uh, the, the, hercules series right like that has a giant ramp with a vehicle bay the val the black um i would argue that the steel is terrible for medical removal so like mm -hmm. 
again, stop defining. Anything with a big ramp is bad for pulling bodies up. If you have a tractor beam, that's one thing, but like they have to be dead. Yeah. And I'm thinking more or less along the lines of like when they unfuck that, you know, like, Mm, oh, okay. If we're when thinking the currently went. in the moment, there is no good ship for, and there's no necessary reason to have to pull somebody to this medical elevator that are at right. each station because you just zap them with the gun and they're good, right? They get up yeah. and they can move on their own. I have yeah. not seen an egregious enough like wound to prevent <laughs> anybody from like. Now, being if we mobile. start losing limbs and shit, that's where like, yeah, I can res yeah. you, I can give you a cocktail, but you don't got legs, Lieutenant Dan. Yeah. Like you can't. Right. You you don't got legs, Lieutenant Dan. You're like you can't, you can't walk. I guess Sorry. if there's anything you take away from this conversation about our definition of aerial insertion platforms, it's that <clears throat> don't let don't let anybody, including us, define what yeah. that is for you. Right? That's your takeaway. backwards plan. What do you how like how do you want to get to the objective? Do you want to hover 50 meters above the ground and drop troops? What platforms are good for that? Right. Right. What platforms can defend themselves? Right. Um, If you're landing, there's just so many things to think about, like as far as maneuverability and defendability and capacity and what type of like uh, vehicles stuff can you put in there? Right. Yeah. Vehicles, no, like troops or vehicles or both. Don't get bogged down. There is no one great ship. Yep. Like there is no meta dropship. Do like, you build it, a house like, with one tool? No. No. You got to use like a hundred different tools for different jobs. Like that's right. the same thing as I see chips. So I think the the downfall of some community members in Star Citizen, they're saying this is a drop ship. This is this is what it's for. And that's because great. Because it has if, X, if, Y, and Z. Yeah. Because if like, it, if you can like, use it for that, that's cool. But features inside the vehicle should not define what that vehicle can do. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or, or define its category. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a, uh, there's it's open like calling your mind. the cutlass black, a fucking salvaging ship. Cause it has a tractor beam on it. It's not a salvaging ship. It's yeah. a multi-role ship. It's like you can do a bunch of different, does shit. a bunch of things. And, and it's up to us to define those. That's what I want in the game. I want to define what a ship is used for. If I can take one of those salvage reclaimers and turn it into a mobile base for an infantry platoon, like, I would do that if it works. If I have the modules needed to customize and make it. And, and currently in game, like, we, we can think outside the box. Maybe for a certain mission, you use a prospector to insert a recon team because it looks unsuspecting and uns- it look, doesn't look suspicious. So you stealth. could you could stealth your way in there in a different way. It's not clicking a buttons and getting your IR down. It's hey, we're just miners for, with rocket launchers. For those pilots back. that watch this, right? Fighter pilots or or infantry guys who also like to pilot. If you're out bumming around and you're <clears> just <throat> bored and you're like I don't know, shooting for whatever reason you're use, using miners as as target practice. If you see another <laughs> prospector come in, are you really like really think about this? Are you really going to go, "Oh, that ship looks dangerous. It might have people on it. <laughs> yeah. You're not. Yeah. Or like you're doing an, you're op- going to be like, Oh, it's another ship. I got to go kill after I'm done killing this prospector. Right. Yeah. Or you're on, and it's going to be non. Yeah. You're out there like guarding an area. You're like, Oh, what is that ship? Oh, it's just a prospector. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And it goes out in mind. What the fuck is a prospector doing here? Like it might be weird, but yeah. And then they're like, Oh, you're he's definitely just not mining. expecting 12 dudes to come out of the back of that thing. Right. Imagine you're you're guarding a base, right? This is very, very plausible in the future. You're you're guarding a base and your org has sold some mining rights to a few people. So you see prospectors quite often. And now now you're like, Oh yeah, well, we haven't seen any drop ships today because the game defines to me what a drop ship is. I didn't see any cutlasses or any prowlers today, so we're not getting ground attacked. You know, they're gonna have to patrol forever. But there's three Surprise, there's, motherfucker. Yeah, there's, there's three prospectors guns there. staring at you. Exactly. Cause like I would gladly pay a mine. I'm like, how much you want? Like you go mine next to this base, right? Yeah, I do all the time. Well, what if I pay you five hundred thousand credits and we just board your ship and you just go mine and we jump out when we tell you. Okay. Yeah. So now we get inserted five clicks away from their base without anyone knowing and he just mines 
He made some money. Doing his own we, thing. We got what we needed. And then he goes and mines some shit. And then we just approach and, and kill everybody. Like, that is a stealth insertion. 100%. And he, the guy and didn't lower weird. his IR. He didn't do anything. Like yeah. That. We didn't press a button. <laughs> yeah. Right? It didn't have reflective paneling armor shielding <clears throat> special. Yeah. We didn't throw a cloak. Alien tech that cloaked them, right? Yeah. Weird. Yep. Stealth can be more than one thing. Just wow. like a ship can be a dropship if you <laughs> if you think outside even the box. Even though it's not defined as one. Yeah. So if you're playing think outside the box, people. And you see a retaliator, you see a hammerhead, hell, you see a hurricane fighter, we could use it as a dropship. I I get so much shit from people. <laughs> you do get so much shit from Cuz I I have this crazy idea that a hurricane dual seater fighter could be used to put a guy on the ground if needed. You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. Is it the You're best not. option? Fuck no. Well, no. Why would you take why would you take everyone out of the, the there's the the most powerful weapon on the gun is in the turret. Why would you take him out of it? I'm like, yeah, I'm aware of that. But if I have a squadron of three hurricanes and they're all manned, so that's six dudes. And I need to get a small ground team on the ground now for some reason. Why can't those hurricanes shit out their turret gunner for five minutes and handle some business and then get back in? That's not like completely defenseless. Is it the best option? No, but it's just me thinking outside the box. The reason I like the hurricane is because it shoots you out the bottom, just like the retaliator. I can hover I over an objective and he falls out. Theme, yeah, the common theme for us here is that um, I don't feel like uh, all the ships that are considered drop ships are mm-hmm. just fucking lame. <laughs> they are. I mean, they really are. Like, they're so lame. You can see where, like, the artists and and the, uh, you know, the the, um, the vehicle team has like drawn heavy inspiration from what like what's out there, and even arguably very limitedly from some sci fi stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but. Other than the Prowler, which I would still even say, like, mimics of fucking Blackhawk to me more so than anything else. It is. Um, there hasn't been an original, like, idea other than this lore talk about nails, right? Troops being Marines put in nails and being shot out. Like, yeah. Wh- why ha- why hasn't there been any thought process on dropping troops out from the bottom? Or if there has, like... Where is that conversation being had, and why isn't? I don't understand why the community is yeah. not more well, boisterous about that. Talking like, about it, I get. I like, like this liberator. is an ar- yes. This is like it very much can be an Arma sim- simulator, and I, and I think people who play FPS come over from those types of games, right? But we're we're talking about space here, right? And it doesn't always have to make sense. Like it's fix it's fiction, people. Yeah. You know, it's not real world. So like. If we hand wave, if we can hand wave fucking cloning, then why can't we hand wave some safe way for us to get out of the bottom of yeah. a ship? Right? There are plenty of ships. I would even argue that the 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 cutlass uh chassis, mm-hmm. the the um Valkyrie chassis, um the prospector, well, maybe not the prospector, but uh there's a couple of other chassis that are very capable of you literally cutting a hole in. Yeah. And putting a door there. Yep. And I just, you know, like to me, it's about making sure that you're cleared of like any modules, bumps, you know, hills, crevices, protrusions, you know, (laughs) out of the bottom of that ship. But I just like I would take a ship that looks like a box that has four thrusters on each corner. Yeah. And the whole bottom just falls out. Like some starship trooper Like it doesn't have to look cool. Like Like just give it. Yeah. Give us. Give us more options for drop ships other than your idea of landing, happening to land, mm-hmm. right, and Purring getting trip. troops out. Yeah, it's it's such an archaic way of deploying troops. Like a thousand um, years into the future, and we haven't figured anything better right. out. I mean, how many wars have we been in in that time, according to lore? Yeah, like think and about nothing? like dropship uh, the starship troopers, right? <laughs> they literally fly in these boxes with thrusters. Right. Yeah. Um, it's in. The, it's like that in the expanse as well. And yeah. And they, 
they, the the expanse they use so much like unconventional shit too like they they've hidden people in cargo containers and like they conduct all these it's a really cool show so like i hope we can do that shit at some level in star citizen cuz i don't want to be confined to their definitions all the time right you know if we can sneak past somebody in a prospector and do it like that's cool if we can sneak past somebody in a Kovalex shipping box like why can't we do that? It's like there's there's so much things we can do. But if 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 you gave us a ship that literally like dove down straight, like as fast as hell, and a pilot had to flip and burn to land, like on the objective, like that would be an excellent way to deploy troops as well. It's like a drop pod that's a controlled ship. Like the Terrapin, dude, like that thing's just a brick. Like what yeah. if it could fall fast and tons of vertical thrust and then land like a rocket like an elon musk rocket and then we jump out that would be more valuable than a prowler coming in and landing and then leaving like give me something that falls super fast and then boom lands super loud yeah. proud like you hit the ground hard even though the thrusters took the dent like helped and then you kick dudes out and then it boogies or that's basically a, what a drop pod is right it falls from orbit, and then the thrusters kick in, stop the descent, guy exits safely, but it's jarring. I would argue yeah. that there's plenty of ways for you to add that to, to player armor as well, right, oh, yeah. at all levels. And it, it doesn't, it's not a jetpack with unlimited amounts of fuel yeah. or large amounts of fuel that you can just hop and jump around the entire planet with. But, you know, sure, if I could see game-breakingly somebody carrying 100 canisters of CO2 and they're just, <laughs> but make the process of changing that canister out, like not worth you carrying a hundred canisters and yeah. using it to jump all over the place. Right. Like there are hundreds of ways to slow the descent of an individual. Right. Um, and like, what if, and I, I, I'm, I'm sure they're talked about. I yeah, really yeah. do. But like, I don't hope ever so. see them on spectrum. I don't nope. ever see them in okay. YouTube videos. And I consume a lot of star citizen content on YouTube. Right. There might be fringe you cases like both. us. We're a small channel. Maybe there are is somebody out there talking about this shit, and we just don't know they exist. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, more. Yeah. Let's get more of this, please. Because more of this talk, more of this discussion, and for those of you listening, more infantry. And you think this is if we're getting repetitive? Here we are, eight episodes in, and we have talked about a lot of the same topics. It's got brought up almost every episode, right? But these are the things that are pertinent for us. All the whole the whole point of ground combat, if you're if you're serious about it, it is repetitious. Anything. If you want to play a sport, like you do the same drills over and over again, right? You want to do yeah. high level teamwork in a video game, like we do drill. And it sounds cheesy to some people, but when you see our results, it's 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 good. And and our channel is we haven't put all of our coolest content out there. We're still waiting on some of that. So yeah, it's we can't coming. blow our whole load in eight episodes, yeah, well, yeah, guys. We Come on. Yeah, we're, we're going to put it up there. So keep watching some videos on our on our YouTube. Keep tuning into the podcast. Um, but I think we really we really beat the shit out of that topic today. I think that was yeah, good. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Yeah, so in <laughs> short, don't be confined to what – don't let other people define what a ship can do or not do. We've given you some workarounds. The at-ease mechanic, that emote, will negate G-forces for now. Um, can it be used in a cheesy way? We don't really care because it's a solution to a problem. You know, so we use it often and, and it works and we, it's a solution to a problem that doesn't significantly give us a greater tactical advantage over our opponent. It yeah. really doesn't. No, it's not like right? we're, we're it popping into a battle. It doesn't directly with... impact the combat between another player. Yeah. We're not flying our ships into the enemy and self-destructing them. Uh, we're not doing any cheese stuff like that where we're like, we're not getting into an air battle with eight, eight ninety jumps. Yeah. With seven or eight ninety. That's jumps. cheesy. Yeah. Nope. We're it's cheesy. Yeah. We, we don't like that. We like to do use real tactics and this is a workaround for it. So that's a solution for you. Um, yeah. going prone. That's another solution for you. You could turn any ship into a drop ship. You don't have to rely on the jump seats for everybody just by using that at ease function. And that's how we use a retaliator in current game. That's how we re use everything. A Pisces. Like hardly anyone ever sits in a jump seat in our group. We just stand at parade rest. It looks kind of weird. Some people think it looks cool. Who, but who cares? We get there and we get the job done and we get out. And yeah. that's what it's about. We're always going to do that too. 
um, if the game throws more weird quirks at us, we're going to find a solution and a workaround that works best. We're not going to let the devs define how we play. We're not. So don't for don't the most fall part, into that like, box. Like we're we're sh we shat on CIG quite a bit here today, and uh, it's passion, right? And uh, oh, yeah. so for that, I'll apologize to CIG for it. But in reality, CIG is probably one of the best, better gaming development <clears throat> companies out there, where they are focused. To, like that stuff is on the forefront of their minds. And I realize a lot of this stuff is some older tech that's kind of like left over from different refactors, and they just haven't had time to get it in the, like the development queue, right. To like fix it or update it or change it. Uh -huh. So, um, but it doesn't mean we can't talk about it. Like, yeah. You know, like that shouldn't be a, a, a off limit topic because all well, the devs shouldn't focus on that right now. Okay. That's fine. But we could still talk about it. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, and how frustrating <laughs> it is. And it is. enough people go, yo, this is frustrating. It's very frustrating. Like, and like, that I, might actually kick CIG into looking at this, right? Like, right. oh, is this really a frustrating thing? Like, we didn't think it was that big of a deal, but all these motherfuckers keep saying it's a big deal. It is. And if, because we're, we're serious about what we do, we're passionate. We spend a lot of time playing games together and we want to do it. We spend way. a lot of money and time playing this game. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, um, Mal, how are we doing on time? You are about uh, an hour and 25. Oh, shit. Oh, well, that's kind of perfect. That's perfect. Um, I think we'll call it there. Echo, you got any final remarks yeah. or anything? No, I, I appreciate what CIG's done. Uh, thank you thus far. Take this as somewhat constructive criticism, <laughs> right? Go uh, test we the love you guys. Yeah. We, yeah, don't please don't fuck the retaliator up. Um, <laughs> we appreciate what you guys are doing. Uh, thank you for giving us a game and a platform to be able to talk about all this stuff uh, and sort of flex some tactical muscles. We still have remnantly from our time in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you viewers and listeners. Appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. All the love and support. Um, go try this stuff and come into our Gilded and Discord if you want to see how we do it. If you want to take this to your group or whatever, we don't care. We don't care if you're a pirate group. We don't care if you're... We don't have sticks up our butts. So come on down. We'll show you exactly what we do, exactly how we do it. We're not afraid to share our tactics with anyone. Uh, we have certain beliefs about that. And, yeah, come on down. We'll show you. So get those retaliate, dust off I, those retaliators. My belief on out. that is, is this. If I share with you all the knowledge I have, I, that just means I'm going to be fighting better opponents. Yep. And Thunder then we got to get better. Right? It just increases. And that means we got to get better. Uh, that's so. a great way to look at it. Um, so this has been episode eight, uh, stuck in the nail. That's, that's another wrap here. Thank you for joining us. And I'm Daft Hobbit with me as always. Hey, Echo. <laughs> Thank you. We got to get better at this. I'm so bad. At yeah. These it's actually. weird and awkward. Hey, we, uh, here's my names again, again, and the third time. <laughs> Mom. Anyway, we'll see you guys on the ground, uh, on the ground take care on on the ground yeah on the ground it means we're probably shooting at you like on the ground yes <laughs> <laughs>